I get it. You see the title of this video and you probably think, how has this guy possibly made a million dollars online? Well, to be brutally honest, I haven't. I've actually made over $10 million online. And that might seem ridiculous to most because there are a lot of scammers fake, and just unnatural gurus out there. But while that is true, it does not count for the entire industry. The dream life you desire is possible. And today I want to tell you the brutally honest story of how I went from zero to $1 million online. Without further ado, let's get into it. When you guys usually see a story online of someone talking about their rags to riches story, a lot of the times they might exaggerate their upcomings. A lot of the times they may exaggerate that they didn't have a penny to spend on food and they might exaggerate the fact that they had absolutely no money. I actually know people like this myself, but I want to start the story by being 100% brutally honest with you guys. I came from a middle class family. We didn't not have money, but we didn't have a lot of money. And that's the thing. I didn't want to come on here and give a story that wasn't legitimate and that was lying to you guys. Yes, I could be like most gurus and say, oh, I came from absolutely nothing and we were eating ramen noodles every night. I grew up with a decent family. My dad didn't drive a Rolls Royce, but he drove a decent car. My mom didn't have everything she ever wanted, but she had some nice stuff as well. I had iPhones, you know, me and my sister didn't eat ramen noodles every night. We would sometimes go to nice restaurants. I was middle class. Class. I wasn't rich or I wasn't poor. I was right in the middle. And the beautiful thing about that, guys, is most of the people watching this video are probably in that position. You guys probably see these exaggerated stories of lying on people who had came from absolutely nothing and grew a huge empire. Whereas, to be honest, most of the modern day millionaires are people who just come from middle class that work really hard. People that lie and say that they came from little to nothing and grew into these huge, blossomed multi millionaires, most of the time are lying and not to point any fingers, but that's not the case. And a lot of these guys, funny enough, have been exposed over the years for having an untrue story in order to promote or sell some sort of course. I wanted to come on here and be completely honest with you guys. I came from middle class. Now, what that does not mean was I was not given a handout when I started my online entrepreneurship journey. However, I didn't not have anything behind me. I knew if I failed completely, I could honestly get into college or do something like that. Nevertheless, I know a lot of people watching this are probably in that exact same situation to where they're probably middle class, but they don't necessarily have the rags to riches drive that these gurus promote. To be honest, guys, like I said earlier, most modern day millionaires aren't people who came from rags to riches. They're just people who are in middle class that took an extra step and put some extra work into becoming multimillionaires. The reason why I was able to excel past middle class and get into the wealthy category category of people was from one and one main thing only and that's I had a love for the game early on. Ever since I was a kid I would love to sell stuff online. I had a knack for basically just turning one dollar into two. Even if it meant hard work, late nights, early mornings for no reason in particular because like I said I was a middle class I just loved to turn one dollar into two. It was a love for the game. When I was in my earlier stages I had ventures like selling shoes which I'll talk about on this on this video. Selling shoes, selling jewels, even going down the bad path of trying to sell drugs. I probably have done it all. And the thing is, it was never for the money. It was always for the love of the game. I mean, I can even remember and recall my early days, I would sell candy in the cafeteria. I would buy candy from Walgreens at a bulk price, like these Smarties. I remember everyone used to love Smarties. I'd buy Smarties at a bulk price. Usually you could get like 30 or 40 Smarties for like the price of like a couple bucks. And I would sell them in packs of two or three for like a dollar pop. So that was one of my first ventures, just selling Smarties in the cafeteria. And that's the thing, it was a love for the game. Because at that age and at that time, I didn't need the money. Like even if I made, let's say $30 in a week, that money would just be sitting in a piggy bank somewhere. It wouldn't really be used. It was just for the love of the game. I could remember one of my favorite ventures that I started out earlier and one of the most profitable ventures I had, and this probably will get me banned on YouTube, but I sold jewels. A lot of people love jewels. And the thing was, so I remember so clearly, I used dhgate.com to find a supplier in China that was actually selling gold jewels. And I remember so specifically of scrolling through DHgate at night and I saw like these gold, rainbow, pink jewels. And I'm like, you know, I see everyone smoking like the normal black jewel. No one has a gold one. I'm sure I could sell this on Snapchat or just putting it on Facebook and whatnot. I remember so clearly I took a leap to order that product because I couldn't just order one or two. I had to order like 50, right? And I, it's not like I had a lot of money and I couldn't go to my family and be like, hey, can you give me money to sell jewels? Because they'll be like, what the hell are you doing? Right? So all I had to do was, or I had to take the leap and use my own money to buy the MOQ for these jewels. I remember so clearly 
how quickly they sold because that was one of the first times in my life to where I had a thought when I saw something, I'm like, hey, this could make a lot of money. I bought it and then I resold it and it made a lot of money. And a lot of the times that might seem simple on paper, but the feeling you have behind actually executing on an idea and making money is to me, you can't put it into words. It's one of the best feelings in the world. And that's what I experienced when I started to sell jewels in my early days. And to be honest, guys, that venture really did take off. I was making a couple grand a week off that and it was more of a euphoric thing because it just started to become like routine. Like I'd put in orders every week. I would start promoting my, my Snapchat out there. And I remember it was just a way of me making money back in the day. Now, am I proud of it? Yeah, probably am. Yeah. And the thing is a lot of people will be like, well, you're, it's not like the most ethical business. You, It's illegal and I probably will get banned for saying it, but I honestly don't care. Are you proud of it? Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it because at the end of the day, it made me the guy who I am today. And if it wasn't for the tribulations and trials I had to go through, through selling these jewels and doing this business when I was younger, I probably wouldn't have the same mentality and businessman characteristics that I do today. Nevertheless, another venture I did when I was starting out my early days was selling sneakers. Now this one wasn't the best one because I'm not a sneakerhead myself. Myself. I typically wear uh, loafers or flippers everywhere I go. I'm not really into like the Jordans or anything like that, but I remember I made a pretty decent amount of money, a couple of thousand dollars, uh, reselling Jordan 1s, especially specifically the Jordan 1 Game Royale, so the blue and white combination. I remember very clearly this is the one I would sell a lot. And uh, it, I mean, it was a pretty easy venture to do. I had an Instagram page I created. I would buy these shoes in. I would do like shout out posts with other pages. I would do uh, like for like, comment for comment, follow for follow, all that fun stuff stuff and I remember over the years I would just build up this page and I'll use this page as my main marketing channel to sell these shoes. The reason one of the reasons why I didn't keep pursuing this venture because it actually was going pretty well was because I didn't have a love for shoes and I didn't see scalability in it you know unless I wanted to open up my own shop or go under that have a huge reseller network under me it really didn't make much sense you know and you can only get so fulfilled off selling shoes and to be honest the jewels were more enjoyable for me. Although money was being made there were definitely a lot of ups and downs and that's the thing about entrepreneurship it's not a smooth road. There's always going to be bumps. For example, with the jewels, there were many times where people scammed me. Many, many times people gave me fake dollar bills or many times I would use a supplier in China. I remember the first supplier I was using, I would order the gold ones and he would just send me the normal ones and no one would buy the normal ones. And I remember I would have the stock piling up because every time I would order like 30 golds, I would get like 25. It's like, hey, where are the other five? It's like, why are they black? And it's like this whole conversation. I have to go through with the guy and then eventually I would just never get the money back. That was a loss I would have to recurrently take people would just give me fake money that happened so many times and I remember one time in specific I uh, sold I think a pack of like because uh, I, I would get the jewel pods as well and I hope this doesn't get banned but I would get the jewel pods as well and I would sell them in packs and I remember this one guy as well was uh, selling uh, let's just say grass for a better lack of words I don't know if I'm gonna get banned or not he was selling grass and I essentially he wanted to buy some pods for me some some jewel pods for me so he did a huge deal right I remember he wanted to buy I think it was like 20 20 packs or something and to the time that was a lot right and I remember he pulled up in his car my idiot ass gave him a pack of 20 of these pods like these 20 of the pack of the pods and I remember he uh, long story short took the pack and then he drove up a little bit and I was like where is this guy going so I kind of chased him down a little bit and then he slowed down I remember he put the window down slowly right and I'm pretty fired up this time because obviously my guard was up I'm assuming that this guy is running off with the pack I gave him right and I'm like oh shit well I'm on Mr. T I'm just gonna, you know, chase him down, knock it down, maybe grab him. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I remember I, I was chasing and then he stopped the car. I go up to the car. I knock on the window. I'm like, dude, come on. At first I'm like, why did he stop driving? Like if I was him, I would just keep driving. But it's besides the point, he lowered the window down a little bit and I could see on the passenger side of the car, he had a gun, right? And obviously backed off because my life is worth more than a pack of 20 jewel pods. But at the end of the day, those are one of the downs I had to experience with my entrepreneurship journey starting out. Even with the shoes as well. I remember I would buy these shoes off of different uh, markets. I would never buy them off like StockX or places like this. If you know, you know. I would typically buy them off places like uh, OfferUp, right? And I remember uh, I would buy at sometimes times of like four or five different shoes at a time off OfferUp. And I remember one time I bought a pack of like, I think it was like four 
four of these game royales and then like two Yeezys or something like that. And it was fake. It came in, it was obviously fake. It was like, it was, it was huge. It was like, I spent a couple grand on all these shoes and they all came in fake. And at the time I'm only worth a couple grand. So that's like 30 to 50% of my net worth just gone like that. And that's the thing guys, throughout the journey, there has been so many ups and downs and it kind of, what I like to say is it helped me grow thick skin. So when I look back on these days of like, I waste, wasted so many, so much time selling just bullshit to random people or flipping shoes or doing all this or just losing money trying to sell jewels for no reason. To me, it's always been a good thing to look back on because I learned so much and it helped me grow thicker skin. Nevertheless, it was all for the love of the game. Like I said, I didn't want the money. I didn't need the money. It was just a love for turning $1 into two. And the reason I'm being so transparent about that is because I know for a fact, there's a few people that are watching this video right now that share the same love. Maybe it's not for the love to go buy designer things or for the love to go spend money or go to nice places but it's for a love of the game to love to grow and actually turn one dollar into two it's a hustler's mentality overall it was extremely enjoyable though even though i went through so many downs and my journey wasn't the smoothest road i had fun the whole way through it even when i was losing money even when i got a gun showed to me i was not faced and i actually still loved the game in fact i was having so much fun that i started to care less and less about school and work balancing both business studying and work made me think that the traditional route really wasn't for me and the beauty Beautiful thing about me saying that is I know a lot of people watching this video might be in the position to where they're trying to balance school, work, and running their side hustles or business. And that's probably why you're on the side of YouTube watching this video. I can tell you from my experience, it's not the easiest thing to do because the sad reality and the harsh truth is the more money you make with your side hustle, the more money you make with your business, the less you're going to want to work on school, the less you're going to work, want to work at your job. That's just the truth. It's kind of like the more money you make and the more dollars that go into your bank account, the less you want to study or the less you want to work at your job. It's just showing you that freedom is actually possible. And I remember so clearly that my journey with this was definitely a rocky run. There would be times where I was at school or at a job and I would have money coming in from selling jewels or flipping sneakers or I'll just check my Instagram DMs and I saw I closed a big sneaker deal or something and I got to go now and give these sneakers to this guy because I'm going to make a couple hundred bucks and I'm still at school or I'm still at a job and I'm thinking this is so useless. And the more money you make guys, trust me, the more useless all this stuff feels. I mean, I'm thinking now in my position right now, now, if I had to go back and sit in a classroom, I, I don't think I could do it because I've gotten to the point where I've been exposed to this huge, uh, this monumentally successful life. And for me to go back to what I was before, just it would be obsolete. There's no point of doing it. Nevertheless, when you're early in your journey and you actually have a love for the game and you're trying out different things, whatever that be e-commerce or trading or agency, whatever the business model you're doing is, or even if you're like me and you're flipping sneakers, you'll understand too that every time, every second you spend at school, every second and minute you spend at your job, it feels like a second taken away from your true passion and that is making money. It's kind of like this conflicting battle you're going to have internally to where a lot of people are putting this in your ear, especially if you're a young man in school and your parents are telling you like, hey, you got to study, you got to get good grades, you got to go to a college, you got to have a nice job, et cetera, et cetera. That's like the devil on your shoulder, right? And then on the other side of your shoulder, the angel, someone else saying like, hey, you're making money with this, this can grow. There's people on YouTube like me telling you it's possible. You have these two conflicting views and it really, it becomes a rocky road because at some time, you might want to sit down and put some time into school, but then you're always so pulled away because you want to spend that time working on your business. And then when you're working on your business, now it's like, well, shit, like I should be working on school, right? Because like my parents will get pissed at me and then that takes away from the business. It's a really tricky road to get down. My best advice for people that are in that situation is the more money you make and the harder you work, the clearer the road will get. Guys, you will get clarity as you work hard. The road is never going to be paved at the beginning. That's why when people get into entrepreneurship, I've noticed nine out of 10 times they ask way too many questions. They try and clear the road right off the beginning and make it a well-known path that they're going down so they know exactly what to expect. But the reason why that isn't accurate and that doesn't really work is because the harder you work, the clearer your path gets. Look, the thing is, if you're putting in hours in your side hustle, you're putting in hours in your business, eventually it will grow into something good. Eventually it will grow into something that will allow you to leave school or leave your job and you can focus on that solely. But for you to get to that point of complete clarity of knowing what to do, you've had to put in those hours beforehand. That's why it's very important you guys work hard because the harder you work, 
the clearer the road will get. And that goes for anything in life. With that being said, when I was in this specific situation to where I was working hard in my business and I was working hard in school and I was looking for jobs and going in between jobs, I was essentially in the part of like not knowing what's gonna happen. All I knew was that I'm a hard worker and I love to turn $1 into two. You know, I, it was a really stressful time in a way because thinking of my future, I didn't know what I was gonna do. And honestly, it was like, am I gonna go to school? Am I gonna stay doing this? Am I gonna flip burgers the rest of my life? Like what's gonna happen? And it was a very stressful period, but because I worked hard, I got clarity along the way. And that was the only reason why I was able to accelerate and excel to the point I'm at today. And a lot of you guys will love to hear this, but when I started to make real money, my entire life changed. I felt like I finally had control of my life. I could finally do the things I wanted to do. From making just 10 to $20 on a good day to actually making hundreds of dollars a week, maybe even thousands of dollars a week, it gave me a lot of freedom. And the feeling I had actually being able to look at my bank account and do things like go to lunch or go to the beach or buy someone something or buy myself something was one of the best feelings in the world. Look guys, I got into this game for the love of the game. I didn't actually think it was gonna work. And when stuff actually started to work, whatever it was the venture of selling jewels or flipping sneakers or whatever it was, I genuinely felt such a surreal and euphoric feeling of making money. Where reality really hit for me when I was able to buy stuff for my close friends and family. Being able to actually buy people things for their birthdays. I mean, a lot of you guys are not actually able to buy the people you love stuff for their birthday and that's a huge. I remember the first holiday was Mother's Day and I actually had some money saved up. And I was, uh, we went out to dinner, me, my mom and my sister. And I remember I was able to pick up the check, right? And that was one of the best feelings in the world because up until that time, I never really spent money. You know, I was only making it and I was making it for the love of the game and it wasn't really real. But being able to pick up the check and do something like that was a huge moment for me. It's not because, oh, there was like a huge check. It was, I think it was like macaroni grill or something. If you know, you know, it's like a Italian restaurant in the US, but it was being able to take leadership, take action and have freedom really to be able to do what I want. And it was this real moment because my mom was like, what the hell, you know, why are you picking up the check? And it was like, well, I have some money coming in now and I can do what I want to do. And I truly feel every young man watching this video should feel that at some point, the ability to take care of the people you love, because that is something that we're built for. And I truly feel if you can't do that, you won't live a fulfilling life as a man. Nevertheless, these were the type of emotions I was feeling when I first started to make real money. I knew then and there I could never go back to the normal route. I could never go back to going to school, to working a job because the time frame to actually having normal money was way too long and I knew right then and there I needed it now, I needed it in the moment. One of the best things about that is I proved to myself that I was able to actually make this stuff work. I proved to myself that I wasn't one to go down the traditional path. I proved to myself that I needed to carve a path of my own. If there's any lessons you can take away from the story so far, it's gonna be that the road gets clearer the harder you work. Guys, there's gonna be constant ups and downs. And even in my own story, as you can see, there was so many ups and downs, times where I was losing money, times where I was making money, times where I was getting scammed, times where stuff just wasn't working out. This should hit home for a lot of you guys because the thing is, if you're stagnant, you will not get anywhere. If you're not doing anything and if you're not truly working hard, the path won't carve itself. You have to take action and actually work hard. That's one of the reasons why I've been able to excel to the point I am now. A lot of you guys might look at my life and be like, damn, this guy lives a amazing life. The thing is, I've always worked hard. Even when I was back in the day, when I, when I was only working hard for five bucks, now I'm working hard for $500,000. It's, it's the same hard work that gets applied. My work ethic has stayed the same throughout the years. And that's one of the main reasons why I've gotten to this point. Nevertheless, there are going to be difficult times throughout my journey. There were so many times to where hard work didn't seem like the answer, but because I kept doing it, I was able to get a clearer path and know exactly where I need to go. Now, a lot of you guys might know me as the Shopify guy, the guy who drop ships or runs Facebook ads or whatever you however you want to put that but the thing is guys I actually started with Amazon I remember stumbling across a YouTube video back in the day of people talking about Amazon and starting a brand on Amazon and actually making money with Amazon Amazon wasn't huge I mean it was pretty big but it wasn't as big as, as it is today but it was definitely a major opportunity I remember stumbling across this type of content online and thinking, well, this is my big break. This is where I'm gonna actually get that freedom. Up until this point, I've already made some decent money, like I said, real money, however you wanna view it, doing my other ventures. But now that I saw that there was basically a new way of making money, a new venture for me to pursue, I knew that Amazon had to be the way. I had nothing. I had no experience. I had no clue how to run an Amazon brand. And I literally just self-educated myself as much as possible. I watched all the YouTube videos I could. I remember late night, 3, 4 a.m., just going through Reddit forums, doing everything I can to understand how to launch a brand on Amazon. I took so many notes, guys. I remember I, I have a binder, and it's actually back in my apartment in Miami. I'm in Dubai now, I can't show you, but I have a binder about this thick of just 
different notes on Amazon on how to start the brand, how to get your UPCs, how to get trademark, how to do this, how to do that, how to come up with a name. I would spend days and days taking notes. Nevertheless, I had some money from selling sneakers and jewels that I actually was able to fund it. And the thing with Amazon versus like dropshipping, what we teach now is with Amazon, you need a decent amount of money to start. And I had a couple grand to my name, so I knew I could do it. After months of taking notes and research and doing all of this legwork, I finally found the product I knew was gonna make me a millionaire. This product clicked all the factors and I already had a supplier I found on Alibaba that I knew could source this product and it was all gonna be great. The product was essentially a small dragon. It was, a, if you guys know, it's what we call an incense burner and I actually have it back home, the, the sample I ordered from the supplier, but I'll put it on the screen so you can see. It's basically like you put an incense thing, you burn it and then smoke goes through the dragon. It's like a cool little home decor thing. For simplicity's sake, we're just gonna call it the dragon burner. I was so set that this dragon burner was gonna make me money. I quickly found a supplier for it on Alibaba and I quickly ordered as much inventory for it so I could start shipping it to our customers. Because I took so many notes on the business model, I really knew what to do. I mean, every single day when I came home from either school or work I remember instead of watching a funny video or instead of going to play with my friends or going to do anything a normal kid would do I mean I already knew so much about the business model because all I would do was take notes instead of playing video games or enjoying stuff whenever I would come home from school and work the first thing I would do is watch videos I watched so many videos and took so many notes on how to do this business model that I really thought I had the golden nugget here and guys the key factor here is I was tired throughout the whole process I to be honest, wasn't really enjoying it as much as I used to enjoy the other ventures because a lot of this was research, me taking notes, me really learning. And it was a whole new process for me because up until this point, I hadn't really had to acquire any new skills, right? And this was a huge new skill for me. So it was not the funnest thing in the world. And throughout the time, I was genuinely tired because I'd come home from school and doing normal stuff. And now I have to do extra work. Nevertheless, I still did it because it was for the love of the game. So my genius idea of launching this dragon burner was cut pretty short. I thought that this product would do extremely well. And I remember putting a majority of the capital I had at the time to order an inventory to the FBA warehouse. Now, I don't want to make the Amazon business model seem obsolete, but there were so many hidden fees that I was honestly washed out towards the end. There were so many pick and pack fees that no one talked about. There were so many complications, so many delays. I remember when I finally got the inventory from China to touch down at the Amazon FBA warehouse, it was another 30 days until they could start shipping it out. And I was already being charged for my Amazon memberships and my trademarks and all this beforehand. So I was in real time burning money. And the worst part is when I finally was able to get the listing up, when the inventory was finally able to get shipped out, the listing literally went down in a Day. I remember coming back from school that day and opening up my phone just to see an email from Amazon saying that your listing is no longer active and you have to go ahead and fix some stuff. Obviously, I've already been through a lot of issues in the past and I know business is not a smooth route. So I went ahead, fixed the issue and the listing went right back up just to go down again in another 12 hours. It was this monotonous, continuous practice of the listing going up and down, up and down. And eventually it got to the point where it just stayed down for a pretty long time. The thing was because the product had flammable little incense burners with it they kept taking the listing down and i couldn't have them remove it from the packaging i remember so clearly i was almost yelling at an amazon rep like can you just remove the incense package and we can just sell the dragon thing itself no sorry sir we can't alter with the package blah 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 and it became this whole process eventually what happened was the inventory was obsolete they were offering it to send it to my house but i was at that time really just giving up i put so much time so much of my own capital in fact literally all my money into this business model to this product that i thought would do so well i took notes for months and it just didn't work i gave up and i think any other person in that situation would have gave up as well it just didn't make sense and the hidden fees on amazon were just stacking up and i eventually had to just shut up my account shut off the listing and take the loss as I got it. If I learned anything from this huge L, it's that speed is key. If I would have, have just gone straight to the listing and launched it within a month of finding the business model, I wouldn't have wasted so much time. I spent months taking notes. I spent months researching different YouTubers and spent months coming up with a name. I spent months doing all of this useless stuff to where I could have just been fast about it, prioritized speed and got the job done. Nevertheless, it's just one of the key lessons I learned during this process. I'm happy, very grateful I'm able to to share it to you guys today. Amazon wasn't working and I realized I wasn't really having fun anymore. I remember at the same time, this was one of the worst times of my business career. I remember Amazon was not working at all. I lost most of my money with that and I shut down my account. 
I remember sneakers weren't working either. You know, most of the people weren't buying from me and I wasn't finding these good deals on OfferUp anymore to sell them. And I really remember no one was buying jewels from me anymore and anything else I tried to sell wouldn't work. People didn't want the China quality anymore because they felt it wasn't that good and word got around that some of them were breaking and stuff and I really just didn't have a good rep anymore. All of my businesses were kind of failing at the same time and it felt like the world was falling and crashing onto me. And the worst part is, it's not that I was losing money, it's not that stuff wasn't working, and it's not that I lost most of my money with Amazon. The worst part is I was starting to lose the passion and the love for the game. Guys, as I made it very clear in this video, the reason why I pursued all this in the first place was because of my love for the game. And as I started to lose money and just start to get really stressed about these things, I started to lose my love for the game. It was just complete discouragement. Anytime I would get back into the thought process of thinking, oh, how can I turn $1 into two? I'd be hit with a thousand different problems. And like I said, it felt like the world was crashing on me. It didn't feel like the stuff was working anymore. And it felt like the, any success I had in the past was just pure luck. I truly felt lost and it felt like nothing I could do could get me out of this rut. I really realized that the game I was playing wasn't fun anymore and I wasn't enjoying the work anymore. Taking all these notes and staying up late to talk to my suppliers and do all this was because I loved the game and I was having fun. And that fun was not there anymore. I realized because I was so focused on the results and my results weren't good, I was not enjoying enjoying the game anymore and that is one of the biggest mistakes I was making at the time was focusing on the results. Guys, take it from me. If you only focus on the results and you don't focus on the process and journey, you will become lost and you will get discouraged. God and the universe rewards entrepreneurs who are able to work during times of turmoil. The universe will reward you if you're able to work when stuff isn't working for you. The thing is, if you're focused on results and you're focused on what you're getting out of it and you're not focused on the love of the process and the love of the game, then you will not be rewarded. The issue with most entrepreneurs I see nowadays is the same thing that I faced back in the day to where I wasn't getting immediate success. And because I was focused on that immediate success, I was not working anymore. I stopped working as much as before and that hard work mentality, that persistent mentality started to phase out. It was at the lowest point where I discovered drop shipping, and that's where everything honestly changed. Even during the low points of my journey, I still watched YouTube videos on e-commerce and all this stuff in general. I'm sure a lot of you guys as well might be in that position to where stuff hasn't worked for you, but you still click on videos like this because I guess why not? Maybe there's a flame inside us we don't even know of. As I watched more content on drop shipping, I, I realized that this had to be the best business model out there. Coming from Amazon FBA to where you had to order in inventory and get trademarks and do all this other stuff set up an Amazon account that costed so much whereas with Shopify drop shipping all you needed to do was list the product and not have any inventory costs it's felt like a God's gift business model I felt that this was one of the best business models out there and just made a lot of sense to me until this day people ask me like why do you stumble across drop shipping why do you choose drop shipping over any other business model it just makes sense and I've had so many so much viral content of me just saying that like hey guys pick a business model that makes sense to you drop shipping made sense to me because at the time I came from Amazon FBA and I saw that all the benefits with drop shipping were all the downsides of Amazon FBA. You don't have to have inventory, you don't have to be set on a product, and you have a lot of room just to test whatever you want. Me realizing this started to give me a lot more excitement in the business world. From being in a position to where I felt discouraged and like nothing was working to now I found this business model that seems like God's gift and it felt like it was the business model that was gonna take me to millions. Nevertheless, guys, even from coming from failed business models, even from coming from a non-successful and negative track record, I still, without hesitation, gave this business model a shot. And I think that's one of the main turning points of my story that actually led me to where I am today. I was binge watching videos as much as I could. I was setting up Shopify stores and launching products as quickly as I could. I would do product research whenever I had free time. And I just felt like this momentum of spiral. I just felt this momentum of this upward spiral of me just being more interested and more indulged in this business model. Nevertheless, I had an edge over everybody else in the space. Because I came from an Amazon FBA background, I knew that branding was very important. Now, here's the thing, guys. Back in the day with drop shipping, no one had a brand. Every Everyone would just have these shitty general stores to where they were launching a thousand products at once. However, I came from the Amazon FBA background and with my failures on Amazon FBA, at least I learned one thing and that is having a brand is really important. So whenever I would test products, I would try and have a brand around them because that allowed me to come out as like a bigger shop, someone who was a bit more established in the space. I remember even after my fifth or sixth product, I would still get sales coming in. And with Amazon, I would never have sales coming in. And this was my first taste of internet money. My first sale wasn't like a huge euphoric moment uh, because I've, I wasn't profitable to be honest with you guys the first 20 30 products weren't profitable but it, it felt good because at the first time I looked 
of my phone and my phone and my laptop had made me money. It wasn't me like, you know, giving someone and getting cash in return. It was the feeling I expected to get from Amazon FBA. I finally got it from drop shipping and it was such a euphoric and great moment. It wasn't until around 30 products that I found my first true winner. And what I mean by a true winner is I would spend a dollar on marketing and I would get two back. Meaning that this product was profitable and it could be scaled up to thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit. Even with these ups and downs and even with all these successes and failures, I was never discouraged. It just became part of my routine to test products and pursue drop shipping. It, it, it just felt good. I felt like when I didn't have a business model or some sort of side hustle taking out time in my day, I felt empty. Because at the end of the day, I felt like if I didn't have something I was working towards that wasn't school or work, then I was not doing as much as I could. And the love for the game came from the side hustle. The love for the game came from coming home and even though I was tired, still working and still putting in the hours for my drop shipping business. And I think that's a really big thing that a lot of other people don't talk about. It's the fact that you want to put these side hustles as a part of your routine. If you're looking to make money online, if you're looking to live this lavish life and you're trying a business of your own, and it's kind of a sporadic thing to where you'll do it when you're free, maybe you'll do it on Tuesdays, but not Thursdays, whatever it is, you're not gonna see success. Unlike me, I made it part of my routine. Even, I, even though I had failure in the past with other business models, I still made this part of my routine and it's one of the reasons why it actually worked. Nevertheless, I actually love the fact that people around me were supporting me as well. I didn't have too many friends, but I had a pretty decent family around me and I remember every time a product would fail I would show it to my mom and dad or my sister and be like hey look at the website I had to build for it and they'll be like you built this website that's so cool I mean they don't know how easy it is to build a Shopify website but the thing is it's like it was the validation that I was doing something right and that's the thing guys you don't have to feel like shit when you're going through your entrepreneurship journey as you make progress no matter how small you should feel good especially when you're sharing these moments with the people you love the thing is guys even though the website might have not have worked and the product failed and I didn't make money off of it I still made a cool website and that to me was a cool thing so that was a win. And if you guys have that mentality of you're always looking at these little things and smiling and as I like to say, dancing in the rain, you'll be an amazing entrepreneur. And with this mindset and all the hard work I was putting in, it finally started to pay off. The product that really hit for me off the bat was an electric lighter. And I talk about this product in other videos, but this product was one of the, I think the 30th product I tested that really took off. I'm talking within like a week and a half of running this product, we were at $1,000 a day in sales. And the beautiful thing about dropshipping in this business model and e-commerce more specifically, specifically is you can spend more to make more. Meaning if your ads are working and you're spending, let's say hundred dollars on ads, you're bringing back $300 a day in sales and maybe like $50 a day in profit. Now you can spend $500 a day on ads, bring back 1.5 K in sales and let's say $500 in profit, whatever it is, right? So the thing is you can spend more to make more and that's the whole point. That's the beautiful thing about this business model. So when I saw some ads working for me and I saw my ad campaigns and my commercials basically doing well, my Facebook ads and my TikTok ads, I just spent more on it and I was starting to to make more back. So instead of making 30% profit on $500, I was making 30% profit on 2000. I started to get attached to the brand. This is a brand, it was called Avant Lights. I actually even ordered an inventory to my house to show it off to my friends and family and make videos of my own. My first million actually came from this brand, Avant Lights. Well, and one of the beautiful lessons I learned while I was scaling this brand was the more money you make, the less attached you get to the actual result. I never got back into the point of being really stressed because I just loved the game so much and it was actually working. And I actually found a venture an industry that allowed me to succeed. I had so much momentum going, I couldn't even stop if I wanted to. I was seeing real success with this dropshipping business. I mean, I was making thousands of dollars a week in profit. I knew how to keep reinvesting back into the brand to grow it, and I was not hesitant to do so. I got branded packaging, I got branded lighters, I got influencer deals, I got more inventory, I got new ads every week. I kept reinvesting back into the business to make it even better. It was so exciting to see the numbers grow. I mean, going from $1,000 a day to $2,000 a day to $5,000 a day to $10,000 a day to even $15,000 a day. And I remember we peaked at around $20,000 a day in sales. And that was huge for me because remember guys, I came from just making a couple hundred dollars a month off selling jewels. One of the biggest levers I found to scaling this brand was actually me making my own content. I remember I would go in my backyard and film me recording uh, the product and putting it in front of me and like making TikToks and whatnot. And I didn't like to do it, but I saw it was making me money and I'm talking like $10,000 a day. So I'm like, hey, why not do it? And it started to work. So I would do it every day. Every single day I'd make five to 10 videos and use those as my ads. Eventually it got to the point that one of my 
peers, an old classmate of mine, saw that video. They saw one of the videos and they recognized the backyard and they knew it was me. And I remember the following days, people would send me the video and be like, yo, is this you? Like, is this your backyard? Like, what are you doing selling lighters? And I got to this point where I had to explain to all my friends, like, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it. It's making some money. I didn't tell them how much money, but I said it was making some money. I remember so clearly one of my friends saying, why are you selling lighters? Like, you can't buy a house by selling lighters. Those specific words, you cannot buy a house by selling lighters. I played it cool. Obviously, I was like, yeah, haha, ha, whatever. But in the inside, I was so pissed, guys. Because the thing is, they had no idea how much I was making. That day, I probably made like $15,000 in revenue, probably like a couple thousand in profit. But they had no idea that I could buy multiple houses with selling lighters. That was a big wake-up call for me. A big wake-up call that I shouldn't stay in the same social circle anymore. I started to have big goals. Goals that I should have. Goals of making a million a month in profit. Goals of being able to travel the world. Goals for being able to do whatever I want. And I knew if I stayed in the social circle, I would not be able to achieve them. So I had to cut everyone off. And to be honest, it wasn't that hard. I think a lot of people make it seem that cutting your current friends off is the worst thing in the world. You're going to be super lonely. Look, if you want it bad enough, you'll do it. And anyone who comes to me is like, oh, how do I cut my friends off if I want to make money? My automatic assumption is that you're not cut out for this game. Because the thing is, if you're cut out for it, and like I said, if you want it bad enough, this is one of the easiest parts of the whole process. So what is going to be lonely? It's all going to be worth it in the end. Nevertheless, at this point, I really knew I was not meant for the normal path. And I really knew it was time to go down fully the business route and take this to the moon. Alex Ramosi has an amazing quote. And his quote is, you don't gain confidence by saying affirmations in the mirror. You gain confidence by having an undeniable stack of proof behind you. The thing is, when you are constantly and consistently making money from something, you start to have an undeniable amount of confidence behind you. Because every day I was banking in thousands of dollars a day in sales, I had so much confidence behind me. I thought I was the shit. And it's what I like to call an upward spiral. Because my business sales grew, my overall work ethic and drive did as well. It wasn't for the love of the game anymore. It was for becoming the best. Staying up all night working. I remember I would stay up till four or five in the morning talking to my supplier, then wake up at seven, eight in the AM and get back to running ads and doing what I needed to do. I actually have a crazy story I've never told anyone publicly, and that is my first supplier, Jason, and I'll put it somewhere on the screen so you can see. My first supplier, Jason, used to call me Superman. The reason he used to call me Superman is because I would never sleep, I never took vacations, and I never quit. At one point, he was actually concerned about my health. I remember so clearly because he would send me a message at like four in the morning, I reply at 401. He would send me a message at 10 in the morning, I reply at 1001. He would send me a message at like 3 p.m. I'll reply at 301. I would just always be active. I would always reply. I was always on it. I would work every day, all day, and I would just not stop. And of course, during this time, I was losing touch with my current friends. I mean, why would they understand? They they, they themselves would not want to be in a position like this. They don't resonate with the type of work I was doing. They don't even resonate with the type of results I'm getting. So of course, I lost touch with my normal friends. And yes, I've tried over the years trying to recuperate and get back with these people, but it just never is going to be the same. And that's the sad truth I can tell you guys is once you actually start to go down this path, you can never go back to who you were before. And the thing was, I wasn't like a complete weirdo growing up. I had a pretty decent social circle and I, and I had a lot of friends, but it was kind of weird being the guy that everyone knew to the guy that no one talked to anymore. No one knew who he was doing and everyone was wondering where the hell did this guy go? But I just was in love with building my business and building who I was as a person that I didn't want to go back to just kicking it with the boys. And the best feeling I could say is having your hard work actually translate into sales, translate into money in the bank. Look, most of you guys are super hard workers. I'll give it to you. You guys will stay up studying to get good grades. You'll work extra hours at your job. You'll do whatever it takes to get whatever you want. But at the end of the day, a lot of you guys haven't had the feeling of putting in work into something and getting money back. And I'm talking direct money back into your bank account. For example, if you want to launch like a, like a sale on your Shopify store, you put in the work to build out the sale, you launch the ads, and now the sale is making you money. And now your bank account is literally growing. That feeling of putting in time and energy and getting money out is something a lot of you guys haven't truly felt at scale and I truly feel it's one of the best feelings in the world. It's addictive. I mean, I saw that if I put in the work and maybe launch a new lighter or a new SKU, I would literally get tens of thousands of dollars out of it. And to me, that's a huge green flag. And I was so addicted to that process of putting in time and getting money out. But don't get me wrong, guys. I'm just a normal guy. And there are times whereas in this part of my journey, I would sit down and reflect and I would think, am I doing the right thing? Were all the sacrifices worth it? Did I have to cut all my friends off? Did I have to stop playing video games and doing things that I like? Did I have to stop spending more time on my family? 
Am I doing the right thing? Of course I questioned myself throughout the journey. I didn't know if what I was doing was meant for me at some times. Even though it was making money and even though I was enjoying it, I was thinking, do I want to be like a rich snobby person like all those people you see on TV? Do I want to live this life? I'm at the end of the day, a normal guy and I like normal things. I'm not some crazy out there person. But at the end of the day, I realized that I fell down this path, not by accident, by my own choices. And unlike a lot of you guys, I like to take accountability for my own choices. I chose to do these things. I chose not to slack off and I chose to keep going. So there's a reason in my choices and there's a reason why I'm going to keep going down this path. Look, I want to relate to you guys because I know these sacrifices aren't easy. And it's not even about the financial sacrifices because maybe you want to join in a program to learn how to make money or maybe you want to start a store or launch an ad or whatever it is. But it's maybe even about the mental sacrifices, mentally not being able to watch shows anymore a lot of people can talk about that like shows are great I, I love Netflix I think Netflix is great but when you're building your business you really don't have time to do stuff like that and mentally you might lose that comfortability right and I want to relate to you guys and say that everyone goes through it everyone gets to the point where they don't want to sacrifice their friends they don't want to sacrifice their comfortability they don't want to sacrifice their current financial situation but in order to grow you need to take these leaps then it finally happened I made my first million dollars without even knowing it the moment where I had a million dollars in sales was honestly the most normal un hyped moment of my life i remember i think i was playing ufc or something I, I i would still play games here and there when i get bored maybe like 10 20 minutes or something like here and there a day and i remember i was playing ufc like this fighting game and it was like a friday or something and i was like okay i'm probably gonna work tonight the sun was going down it's gonna play a little bit of this video game and probably get back to work and i remember i was work i was playing the game and i'm thinking wait a minute last month we did like 100 something k the month before that we did like 100 something k this month we're on track to do like 100 something k have I done a million yet? It just, it just hit me. Like I, I might've done a million in sales. Holy shit. So I was in my uh, office. I remember I, I, I ran to the other side of my office where my laptop was. I opened up my laptop and I'm like, look at like all time on Shopify. I did over a million in sales. It wasn't an amazing moment. To be honest, as you guys can tell, I wasn't like the most excited about it. I didn't even know what happened. I think a lot of people overhype the idea of like a million dollars in sales and make it seem like it's the biggest point of your entrepreneurship journey. To be honest, it wasn't. The biggest point for me was my first 1K day. When I hit a million dollars in sales, it felt normal because nothing changed on my day to day. It was honestly just like, oh, that's cool. Let's get back to work now. Like I said, the best time for me was when I hit that first 1K day and I can reflect back to the feeling of hitting that first 1K day because it was one of the actual best euphoric moments of my life. It was the biggest aha moment I had. I remember so clearly that it was, I was with my family. This was like a, I think it was like a Sunday or something. I was with my family and we were, we were doing some activity. I think we were playing a sport or something. Like we were at a park, like just what families do, right? And I remember we were playing a game or something. I don't remember exactly the game because this was years back, but we played the game basically for the whole day. Like I, I wasn't at my phone until like 6, 7 p.m. I remember going back to my phone around 6, 7 p.m. and seeing that I had already done like 1.5K in sales for the day. Sometimes when you guys run ads online, some days it just kind of goes really good some days it doesn't go as go as good and this was one of the days where it went pretty good we had the same ad budgets maybe a little bit more than the day before which we did like it was like seven eight hundred dollars in sales and then the day after was 1.5 and it was like wait a minute i did over a thousand dollars in sales today i made like four hundred dollars in profit it was a big aha moment because to me that was like okay if i can do this i can do 10 million 100 million i my, my brain just expanded when i hit a million in sales like i said it wasn't like a huge aha moment it was just like okay keep going nevertheless there was a lot of fear involved to getting to this process as you guys know with drop shipping and e-commerce when you spend money you make money like i said earlier let's say you want to make a thousand dollars a day in sales you have to spend around two to three hundred dollars a day on ads it's typically just how it works right so there was a lot of fear of increasing my ad budgets because i'm thinking if i increase them and it doesn't go as planned i lose the money but because i was a bit ballsy and i knew this thing would work and i was so confident in my abilities to make money i increased the ad budgets and i kept doing so and that's how we actually got to 20k a day in sales at our peak one of the big takeaways I want you guys to get from my story is that you shouldn't do this for the money, but for the love of the game. One of the only reasons why I was able to get to where I am today is because I, till this day, I love the game. I have a love for turning $1 into two, and that's why I'm in the position I am today. It's all about, I know you guys have heard the cliche quote, it's about the journey, not the destination, but it honestly couldn't be more true. It's about the growth you experience over time, and your failures are going to teach you a lot more than your wins. The first $1 million in sales is honestly just a stepping stone. And and it wasn't a huge moment of my life. And I think there's a lot of those 
aha moments to come. If there's anything I could tell my younger self is that, man, just enjoy the process because you're gonna get there one day. Your million dollar moment might not feel exactly how you want it to feel, but it's not about the million dollar moment. It's about the journey that got you there. That's where the real growth happens. Nevertheless, guys, that was my journey to a million dollars. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is more of a raw, authentic video to explain my story and how I got to where I am today. As always, guys, if you want help building and scaling your own e-commerce brand, be sure to click the link below and schedule a call with me and my team so we can help you out. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.